Let's head out now to where the trade winds die down and the island of Samoa floats in the mid-Pacific doldrums. It's one week after the October full moon. And hidden beneath the surface, buried in the reef, the pololo are stirring. They're tube worms embedded in mucus-lined burrows, getting ready for a reproductive frenzy. As the rear end of each worm breaks off, it wriggles upwards, filled with either eggs or sperm. The male's yellow and the female's blue. Despite being mere reproductive segments, these epitopes have small eyes and can be up to 30 centimeters in length. As the sun pushes through the waters of the Pacific, the vast swarm reaches the surface. Here, the worm segments explode, releasing their contents, eggs and sperm, en masse. In a microscopic world, tiny sperm battle for gigantic eggs. The villagers know what the October full moon will bring, and they make the most of it. It's the unexploded reproductive segments thereafter. Packed with either eggs or sperm, they make a nutritious prize. Some are eaten raw on the spot. They're said to taste similar to caviar. But the rest of this gelatinous mass will be either baked or fried. An annual feast that the ancestors of these villagers enjoyed when they first arrived here. The mass swarming continues for several days. Then the epitokes, having emptied out their precious contents, sink back to the reef below. In a few days, the new palola larvae will also end up here, burrowing down among their parents, who, although they might have lost two-thirds of their bodies, still survive. No one knows how the palola manage their timing. They're too deep down in their holes to see the phases of the moon or note the ebb and flow of the tides. And yet every year they spawn when the tide and moon are exactly right. They're sea creatures who are exquisite timekeepers. Do you know why this stretch of water off the coast of Bermuda is exploding with light? Find out after the break.